Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMyMonthly.com. In this video, we're going to study estimation as it pertains to multiplication problems specifically. Okay, let's get to estimating 8 times 209. The basic idea is that we round whatever numbers are difficult so that then we can multiply mentally. So we would here round the 209 to 200 or to 210. These squiggly lines are the rounding symbol. It's about 8 times 210. This is still quite easy to multiply mentally because you just go 8 times 200, which is 1600, and then 8 times 10, which is 80. So we get 1680. Here, 19 times 24, I will round 19 to 20. And since 2 is such an easy number to multiply by, I will not round 24 at all. Okay, this is basically 2 times 24 is 48, and then we tag a 0 from here, 480. Here I'm going to round both numbers. 37, I will round it up to 40. And 415, I'm going to round to the nearest 100 to 400. And it gets rounded down, and that is good, because when you're estimating, Rounding one factor up and another down is a good thing, because then the arrow basically kind of balances itself a little bit. And so we will just get here 16 and 1000, 16,000. A money amount works just the same. We can round it, for example, here to $20 and get about $140. Or, since it's not that difficult to multiply mentally, we'll just leave it as $21. And this is now 7 times 20. 140 and then 7 times 1, which is 7, so $147 about. In reality, of course, it's a little bit more. Here, two difficult numbers to multiply. And we could, if we start rounding to the nearest 10, I would get 60 times 90. And I would be rounding both of them up. And that gives more error to my estimation than if I could round one down and one up. So let me show you, let's say around 89 to 90. And then, since 56 is kind of close to 55, which is exactly in the middle of 50 and 60, let me look at these two, 50 times 90 and 60 times 90, and then find a number in the middle, and that would be a pretty good estimation for 56 times 90. This is, okay, 45 and two zeros, and then this is 54 and two zeros, see? So let me choose just a number there in the middle, about 5,000, right? And I think that's a pretty good estimation for this original one. And when we estimate, sometimes we want to find the error of estimation. So here's a one that type of problem. We estimate, we calculate exactly, and then we check how much was the error of estimation. The idea here is that if you're given a multiplication problem and you estimate first, then your estimation will help you in deciding if you got this one correct. My estimation would be, I can simply round this up to the nearest 100, which is 500 here, times 7, so I get 3500. And now I'll multiply exactly. 7 times 2 is 14, and carry 1. 6 times 7, 42 plus 1, 43. 4 times 7, 28 plus 4, 32. Okay, this is the exact answer. And now the error of estimation we find by looking at the difference between these two. And the difference, you know, you subtract. The error would be this minus that. Okay, there's 6, there's 6, and here's 4, 266. The error of estimation is 266. You could improve this estimation by rounding to 460, right? 460 times 7, if you can do that mentally, multiplying parts, then you will get pretty close to this. This problem, if you read it and think about it, is essentially a division problem. How, a bus seats 42 people, and then how many buses would you need to take 618 students someplace to the museum? And we can find the answer by dividing 
the number of people and the number of buses, you know, 618 divided by 42. But that looks and sounds like a difficult division, right? But we don't have to divide. We can use multiplication instead. And we can also use estimation to solve it because we don't need to know what would be the exact result of the division of the multiplication because if I divide this by this, I'm going to get some odd decimal number. I don't need that information. I just need how many buses. So let me use rounding numbers when we are estimating. About 40 fit into the bus. And there's about 620 of them. But if I use multiplication, I'm just going to make a guess. For example, if I take 10 buses, I would be able to take 400 students, right? That's not enough, of course. And then, if I take 15 buses, 4 times 15 is 60, so this is 600. That's very close, right? 15 buses. But I was only putting 40 in them. This is not exact. So now I would need to check my estimation that will 15 buses exactly be enough. And now I will multiply 42 times 15 here to check. 5 times 2 is 10 and then 20, 21. 1 times 2, 1 times 4 and add 630. In other words, 15 buses is enough to see 630 students. So 15 buses is enough. Would 14 buses be enough? If I take away from here 42, then that's less than 600. So 14 buses is not enough. 15 buses is the final answer. Okay? We didn't need to do any difficult division. We just estimated and checked the estimation by multiplying and we're done. Another one that we can use estimation with. Mom pays you $8.50 each time you mow the lawn and you want to buy a tool set that cost $109. Question is, how many times should you mow the lawn until you have saved that much money, until you have earned that much money? We're going to round this to $9 first of all and then use mental math. For example, 10 times $9 would be 90. 11 times 9, 99. 12 times 9 is going to come in pretty close. 12 times 9 is $108. So it looks like, looks like maybe 12 times, but that's not quite enough. Also, you're not exactly earning $9, you're earning $8.50. So our guess would be maybe 13 times. 13 times should be enough. You can also look at around this down to $8, because $8.50 is exactly midway between 8 and 9. So 12 times 8 would be 96. 13 times 8 would be 104 and uh, 14 times 8 then 112 so 14 times would be enough if it was eight dollars that you were earning and here 13 times so let's make a guess it's going to be 13 times and now we will just check to make sure by multiplying this by 13 Okay, 3 times 0, 3 times 5, 15, and then 24, 25, then 1 times 0, 1 times 5, and 1 times 8. Add. And here's my decimal point. 150. Yes, that is enough. So 13 times is enough. 